What's going on, everybody? This is Drew here. I want to welcome you all to a brand new episode of Phoenix Down. This is Phoenix Down 117.1, and we are continuing and finishing our playthrough of Anodyne. Today I have with me... What? I was going to say, it might as well be uh, just part zero, because nobody could listen yeah. to the last episode. So if this so episode we have... sounds weird... I we guess, have spoiler, I, hey, it's Anthony. Uh, we are doing a weird way of recording, and we're going to so, see how that works. So it may work, it may not. We'll find out. <laughs> this whole this whole experience has been experimental. <laughs> this is true. Um, so <laughs> we we actually have a very awesome email <laughs> in regards to last week's episode. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and I, I will read it off at the end there. But talking about anodyne. So anodyne. Um, yeah, we, we made it ha halfway, I would say. Um, yeah, I a little mean, bit it, less. it's a, it's a weird game with the amount of content, uh, and the pacing of it, like the pacing of the first, I guess, half is much slower than the latter half. So is it really halfway, but then there's yeah, so can... much more content in the latter half. Yeah, I feel like I put way more time into this this last play session than I oh, did, did you? Okay. last week. Oh, absolutely. Um, the first play session was more of like I don't know where to go. I was I was you know kind of discovering stuff. And to be fair, I will give the game credit. By the end of this game, I had pretty much everything memorized. Yeah, like I knew where I was going. Like I was like, okay, well I go up here and I turn left and I go here and do this. Um, the map's not the greatest. No, um, the map kind of sucks. The only good thing about the map is that you can warp to either the nexus or you can warp to the beginning of a dungeon. Yeah, the the map, the thing that needs to be fixed on the map, if you were to change something about the map, it's that it just shows you if there's an entrance or exit. Yeah, I should say to each thing and how they connect. But like, it doesn't really show you how they connect. It's like um, you can't go through a certain like it'll say like oh this this block has three exits from the bottom from the left hand side and the right hand side but that doesn't mean you can go from the left to the right e left entrance to the right exit yeah also so, it doesn't do first floor second floor third floor they're all on one map and i'm like okay i don't know which one's the first floor this blue dot leads to another blue dot but it's to the left over here yeah, that's, i'm like that's, oh, that's the hotel yeah, yeah, that so I did that. So I did that one first. That's the hardest dungeon in my opinion. Holy crap, it is. So not only is it hard just trying to find your way out of there, it's also difficult to like some of the platforming in this game kind of sucks. Platforming in two dimensional games like this always suck. I think the only game that's done it okay, I guess there's more than one, is, is Link's Awakening. And I think it's partially because they give him a little bit of hang time because he flips. Yeah. Um there was a mystical ninja game that kind of looks like Link's Awakening, like it's that same sort of Zelda top down look. Right. And it had platforming and it's it's a no good. So I I don't know. So the, I I will say was it the it start the game started getting creepy. At this point, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I wasn't gonna deny that there was there's some creepy elements. It's just that is not the goal, the sole goal of this game. Sure. Um, the hotel, the hotel because the hotel to get to the hotel you have to cross through the gray area, right? No, the no. gray area was for the uh, the apartment. Right. Sorry, I confused the apartment and the hotel together. Yeah, the apartment's a pain in the ass too. See, uh, by the time I made it, I did the apartment last. Oh, by the time, yeah. by the time I made the apartment, like I know all this. Yeah, yeah, in comparison to the hotel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, trying to imagine the boss of the hotel is the Jason Voorhees looking figure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm I'm thoroughly confused on on what the hell is actually happening in this game i i still am if we're it's, being honest i think the the whole point of anodyne's story is that the story is not really important okay. i know that sounds like a cop-out i think there are a bunch of just little motifs 
that feel like a bigger experience. Like there feels like there's more to what's going on in those worlds, but ultimately you're just passing through them. Um, I also feel like this is supposed to be a dream. Because yeah, they mentioned like, dreams multiple times. There's, there's, so, so the second game kind of insinuates that this is a place. Like there, there is an actual physical place you are in. It's not just dreams. But you made Nikki, which this game clearly takes some inspiration from, is about dreams. So it's hard to like. It, this feels like the developers going, "I want to take the best from all these different games that I like." Right. Yeah. Um. Which shows in this other areas, but um, yeah, at times it's like it's it's almost too weird, like weird for weird's sake. Yeah, because there's there's definitely some some sketchy stuff in here, um, especially when you so we can go ahead and just talk about it. We don't have to do them in order as I did them, but yeah, uh, when when you make it to the apartment, going to the apartment is weird. You go the into black this, and white, the black world. and white, yeah, black and white world. Is it's like a neighborhood and, and it's grainy, which is yeah. weird because the rest of this game is very clean looking. Yeah, and this this it, it starts to have like a um, post processing put over top of it. Yeah, and it in the people there. Um, instead of talking to them, you you now don't have a broom. You have what looks like a knife. And you stab people, and they fall over and die and bleed. And then you talk to their ghosts. Yeah. Like nothing happened. And, and then there's also shadow people running around who will yeah, kill you in two hits. Yeah. The um, And I think, so this is where I'm like, I think it's just a bunch of different ideas that they were like, we're putting this into a video game, but like none of them are full enough. Like we have the base gate of what the game is going to be, because... If you look at, like, one of the houses has a television screen where, like, somebody's firing a gun just constantly. But they're like, oh, we live in such a peaceful neighborhood. Meanwhile, you've stabbed all their neighbors. And, like, the weird desensitized to violence culture there. And maybe you're supposed to take that away. Maybe this is a big parody of America. Maybe it's not. And I kind of love the fact that it's, like... Again, not important. And this is not it. The weirdness is definitely something I like. I like it just to be like weird. Where like to me, the the game, the the whole point of this game was not a story. If it was, then then I guess it fails. What I really, really wanted to talk about was the post game, but we have still some places to go. But this is the first point in this game outside of like the trying to talk to the fishermen and going into Blood World. Yeah. Where the game is now like off the fucking rails. Like now it doesn't make any sense at all. This doesn't even look like it's connected to the rest of the world. How yeah, could no. it be? No, it was like a fantasy world to begin with, and now we're like in a modern day. Not small town with no color while the rest yeah. of the world had this like sort of toned down colors like there, yeah they were like you had all the greens and yellows and everything but it was like toned back just a little bit yeah and it doesn't feel magical either it no. like blood world as as dark as it may be it feels magical like it feels like it could exist in a fantasy world still and this True. doesn't and then the uh the apartment, like I said, I did this last, so it wasn't very difficult. I probably should have done them in order. It happens. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, oh, well, this is this is easy compared to the other two dungeons that I've already done. Um, i trying to imagine, what was the boss of the, the apartment? I can't remember. I don't remember the boss or the apartment. Like any game, you like ask me what the bosses are in A Link to the Past, I will forget one. Um, yeah, because ultimately, like my favorite of the bosses in this section is the circus boss. The yeah, the uh, the the two trapeze, trapeze artists. artists. Yeah. yeah, and that that's the second one is the circus. Now, I was getting a little creeped out from I don't even know what it's called. 
the so there's always before you get to a dungeon you have to make it through an area um and going to the circus you go through what i will say is 8 bit world yeah i think they call it so i believe again so yume niki had something like this where you wander around into like an 8 bit world and i think they call they refer to it as like famicom world because the color palette is specific yeah and uh graphics this, are a little bit more simplified yeah and the gameplay changes in this game a little bit to not getting caught by the creepy dudes yeah the zombie looking things yeah the tall zombies yeah you know, it was just a big maze um, luckily I had explored the majority of this area because I did not want to go back through that maze again to get a card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you have to anyways. Well, I, so <laughs> I did not, um, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the, the end game stuff. I explored 10 minutes of it. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't, well I didn't, I'll I didn't spoil it for you. I didn't have the time. That was That's the fair. issue. Okay. But um yeah, um <laughs> I may have I may have picked a dud everybody. That's what no, I'm hearing. No, 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 no. I and and I I like I didn't answer your question because I wanted to answer it on on the show. You asked me, "Do I hate this game after I beat it?" And I I will thoroughly tell you, "No, I did not hate this game. In fact, I enjoyed it." And the reason why I enjoyed it was because it did feel kind of like a a simplistic you know, top down Zelda game. And you can see the, they definitely wear their, you know, influences on their sleeve. And I, it was a fun journey. That was the thing for me. I was like, I didn't mind it. Like I, like I didn't mind going through the, the dungeons, even though I was like, Oh man, this is like a mind bender here. And, um, like even, even like I, I had fun kind of like cleaning up the rest of the cards you know, because I was like, so that's another thing I, I'll give the game props for is that, you know, you have portals and outside of each gate where you can go to the portal, they show you if you have all the cards or not. I was like, OK, cool. So all right, I know I don't have to check this area again, because if they didn't have that and I just had to explore until I found the cards. No, thank you. Uh-uh. But I was able to figure out which which areas I needed to go through and I genuinely explored. Now did I use the fact or use the video that you sent me a couple of times? Yes. Yeah. Here's the thing. That video is probably the best video you can use to play through Anodyne if you don't know where to go. But man, the guy recording that video is playing the game like I did. <laughs> yeah it's, it's like, not this guy is like i don't know where to go he's mm -hmm. pausing for a few seconds so you know he's looking at a fact <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like this it guy was is just <laughs> what's perfect about that playthrough though and that's the reason why i sent it to you is it doesn't spoil anything about the end game yeah yeah it and ends we'll basically we'll talk about it i'm not credits. gonna i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fuck around in this episode like i did last episode realizing i probably should have prepared better I will no. be spoiling things in this. I know that's clear for, for Phoenix Down anyways, but I think I do want to tell you because you might want to go back and, and see the stuff I, I'm talking about. Or no, watch. No. It's, you know. no, no, I'm I'm definitely interested. It was just I ran out of time. Like I finished yeah. the game yesterday it's, afternoon. It's, and... it's for people that are not in the U.S. like myself. It's Thanksgiving week, so we're recording on Wednesday. Yeah. That happens. So, yeah. And so um, it, it, it is what it is. So going back, the circus is one of my favorite dungeons because it did add some like weird platforming elements. Um, because I believe the circus is the boost pads, right? Mm, or am I got I, the wrong dungeon again? Cause that the boot. Be so the boost pads may have been introduced in this dungeon, but they were definitely in the hotel. Yeah, I know. No, they're in the hotel, but I believe, I believe, yeah, because I believe I did them in order. So that makes sense. But I, I recall like having to kind of go around certain floors, um, because, and there's like conveyor belts and stuff. It's, it's, they all, they all kind of blend together because the mechanics are very simplistic. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. With you a, a you only have, attack. that's it. That's all you have. <laughs> but it is my favorite boss because. 
unlike every other Zelda-like game, except maybe Ocarina of Time, because you do see some remnants of, like, the Dodongo King if you go back, but it requires a lot. This right. boss battle, you fight the two lovers that are trapeze artists, and I like their sprites, too. And then they fall down a hole, and you pass by their dead bodies. Yes. And what a choice. Like, that's a very weird thing to do in a video game. Like, here are the characters that just died, and their bodies aren't disappearing like everything else in this game. Yeah. And I don't know, there's just something about that. Yeah, like a lot of this game, creepy, unsettling. I think like the, there's the the weird whispers that the just the random citizens have that you've run across the people yeah. that don't talk. It's unsettling, and I think that's what's perfect about even the music. Which again, I love the soundtrack to this game uh, so much that I bought it. Um, it's. It, it's just like on a um, uh, design level, I'm like, there's something weird about this game that's like perfect. It's not like so out there that um, I have to be like, oh, uh, yeah, no, that just like Deadly Premonition I brought up last episode. Deadly Premonition has some shit in there you just go fucking why is it why is the dachshund like coming down because it's i'm out too late at night or whatever like there's right. zero point of that a and gigantic do that. dog yeah it doesn't do that in this game it, it feels like these are organic parts to the world i just don't understand the world that's why i feel like it it definitely feels like some kind of dream like a fever dream It's just a strange, strange. Yeah, yeah, like every time I was playing it, I was just like, "This feels like one of those cursed games." That's why I kept kept playing in my head. Yeah, I mean, I I understand what you're saying. I still don't see that, but that's not that doesn't that you know that's just uh, mileage may vary, sort of thing. Yeah. Um. There it is. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we're back. Ha. Yeah. Oh, now I gotta cut that out. They didn't know. No, you, no, I. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um. So you finish these dungeons, Drew, and then you're on your way to the final boss. So yeah, I finished the dungeons, and then sent you a message saying, "Okay, I beat the last dungeon. <laughs> now what?" <laughs> That's right. And I sent you the video, and I'm like, hey, I don't know, man. I figured. It out. So, so here's here's the issue. I had to watch that video, and I was just like, man, this is. I did these all out of order and I finally got to where he was at. And I was like, this guy seems to be just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, where's this guy going? And then I noticed he's like, oh, he's getting the rest of the cards. And I was like, all right. And that's when I was like, okay, we'll pause the video. Let's, 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 let's do a pro gamer move here. We're going to, we're going to find. com. No, I, I, I didn't. all cards. <laughs> no, I did not do that. I did not do that. I actually went and found the cards myself. Okay. Um, and it, and it was fine. Yeah, I mean, like I like I said, it was it was. I was like, okay, well, let's look at the map. All right, I have not been to the left in this one block, so let's go find this. And so I went there and I solved a few puzzles, stuff like that, and I was able to find the majority of all the cards. And. I think th this is where I was like, because at first I and I knew about what was coming. I unfortunately spoiled parts of it for myself, which made me play it as soon as I did after having for so many years. Um, and this is where I go from, oh yeah, this is just a fine game to like, there is something special about Anodyne. I love the fact that there's these weird cards. For some reason, they're, everybody that exists in this world has a card. Yeah. Everybody. And they're just around, and I need them to progress... But, like, why do I need cards of people that exist in the world to progress? There's something weird about that. Like, is that a commentary on video game shit? Or is this how this world works? Or, like, what is... It? And then you and you get a little description of the person with the card. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Every enemy, every character, 
sometimes just random things get a card. So the the one thing that I don't know if you knew, I found out. If you go back to the bike girl, she will tell you where the cards are. Yes, she. So she will also tell you when, which you didn't do the NPC quest. She give, she helps you with that as well. Yeah, um, all the characters that you talk to in the NPC quest kind of give you a hint on where the next person is. She will give you either the same hint or a different hint that kind of helps you point point you in the right direction. Yeah, um, I will tell you right now, I did a good portion of the NPC quest without a walkthrough, and then eventually I was just like, I do not know what they're referencing. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now. As long as you're using a text walkthrough for and and, and not keep, just don't keep going back to the well with this game. You you use a little bit, get a little bit further, and then experiment more. I don't feel like you're you're cheating yourself of an experience. I feel like this game was built with some idea of the internet exists. There's there's no way some people are like you're expected to know all this and not share that information. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's why I started getting kind of like the, the vibes of, um, of inscription where like it was yeah. more of like a collective that worked on this. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no ARGs in this, but it, yeah, that that's post game stuff still. So uh, feel free to continue on after. So uh, remind me where the last boss is. Cause I know that you have to get to the, garden area yeah see and i hadn't discovered the garden area so i got all the cards i got the achievement that popped up saying hey you got a you got 20 no 36 cards right you got okay. all the cards yeah wink and nudge and it's like you got 36 cards congratulations okay well i got all the cards where do i go <laughs> and I, I i wandered around i finally looked back at the video and i was like oh okay so i didn't even know this garden area existed um but i made it there and um, we were stopped by the sage. The sage is like, oh, you're not ready for this yet. You actually have been reading the sign wrong. I was like, well, hell, I didn't know there was a sign here until I just found it. Um, and you didn't need 36 cards. You needed, like, what, 93 cards or something like yeah. that? Yeah, bumps up the number to absurd. Like, there's not even that many cards in the game. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. And so I walked around. I found the sage card. I was like, okay, well, there's a sage card. Okay. And I had to come back and talk to the sage. Nope. Didn't say anything. I was like, okay, so I'm going to go to the gate and the gate opens anyway. Okay, cool. And the sage is like, you, I'm warning you, don't go in there. You're not ready. And then we have a boss fight with the sage. Um, And that boss fight was pretty easy. In fact, most of the boss fights in this game were pretty easy because I had, I got all the health upgrades with the exception of one. So yeah. I was able just to stand in front of the boss and just keep attacking until they the died. Final boss, the final boss does not. Allow no, that. The, no, it does not. And I was like, <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. So, so uh, you have the fight with the sage and then I can't recall what happens in the garden. I just know that that's how you have to get to Briar. So there's two there's two different areas. Well, you there's snow through. world, there's snow yeah. world and lava world, right? That's correct. Right. Um, they're quick. They're not. They're yeah. not. They're, they're not mostly long. a puzzle too, right? It's just kind of how to get to one end to the other. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and this is where the game is like, you know, this game. I noticed that this game is rated M for mature. And I was like, so far I haven't seen any M-rated stuff. I mean, you see dead bodies, but they're pixelated and stuff like that. But you start talking to some of the NPCs in here, and they're just dropping f bombs and stuff. I was like, what is this yeah. necessary? Did they had did he did he have to put this in the game? Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's there's some. I feel like this is one of those man. Sure, fuck it. I'm already in. You know. Yeah. Um. Like one of my, we, we forgot to talk about it, uh, the cube world, where all the yeah, geometric yeah, yeah. shapes exist, and there's a hierarchy because the cubes can sit on their flat side longer so they don't fall off the edge, which means they're king. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. But like, they all what a said weird. None of them are existing. They're, they're all just holograms or, or they're from a yeah, different plane. Like... 
give me give me that good garbage like tell me <laughs> you know tell me some weird shit is all i have to say to that like just really pour on like okay uh not to quote mandalore gaming but he is he has used a term and i'm like yeah that that's accurate to some video games brain poison Brain don't poison. think about don't think about it too hard. The more you take in, the worse it gets. Yeah, and it's like anodyne's got a bit of that, but I all I find it kind of all positive. Of like, yeah, this is a kind of a trip. Like fucking, it, is this real? You know, is a good question to ask. But I'm just gonna assume it all is, which makes this shit even fucking weirder. Because yeah. we just go, it's just a dream. I'm gonna be like, okay, well. All right then, but even you, Mayniki, which again, highly inspired this game. You, Mayniki's like endings are not just like it was a dream all along, which is kind of obvious. No, like they were like, hey, maybe it wasn't. Some weird shit happens. I, uh, yeah, just just like the weird little worlds that they built in this game. And you get to sample all of them, but without having to get too deep, because you're like, you know, not helping the cube people, really? Fuck them. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, we, we basically what we're trying to do is bring ice and fire together, uh, because there's, there's briars. Ha ha. Get it? There's There's a bunch of briars covering this area, and we can't go through. Um... But after we bring the ice and the fire together to release the briars, the briar shows up, and uh, that that's the that's the only thing I want a fucking answer to. Why briar? I have no idea. Right, I just don't know how they came up with that. Like, I don't. Is there another? Is there another thing called a briar? I don't know. I like, don't know. Hang on, I'm Google searching that because it's that Google. That's got to that's got to be something, right? I I legitimately don't know. Like young feels like the you know, cheesy uh protagonist name. Our protagonist Briar. is young. That's his name. A rustic or unsophisticated person, especially one from Appalachia. That does nothing to explain this. Thank you. So, do you get you need the swap tool for this, right? Uh, yeah, you you yeah. need the swap tool. You get it when you enter the the garden area, and then you have to go. You have to solve a puzzle. Then you can go to the ice and fire areas. And you can only use it in certain areas. Yeah, there are times where you try to use it, and it says you cannot muster the strength. So, to use in it. my opinion, the swap tool makes this game. I've never seen something so just weird. Like, here's a tool that absolutely breaks this whole experience. I'm limiting you to these rooms because otherwise this game falls apart. Go for it. <laughs> and it's a brilliant puzzle solving tool. It's it's I'd put it on the same level as the portal gun. It only works in a 2D space. I understand that, but but just like the portal gun really only works in a 3D space, in my opinion. Um, I love it. There's more to that to come. We'll talk about it after the final boss discussion. Well, the final boss is Briar. He can um, fuck himself. It's one of the hardest fights. It is really one of the hardest fights. They throw everything at you. So I was like, I and you still like, only I, have two tools. Yeah, I, I, I'm just like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing here. You gotta but, put the, you gotta pick up the dust and put the dust down. It took me forever to figure that out. To get because well, I noticed that that the dust would explode when it got hit by the fire. So I was like, okay. Do I put it up next to Briar himself? So Briar transforms into Big a guy, beast. yeah, a guy in a pod, and then there's two flowers on either end. One is an ice flower, one is a fire flower, and 
certain sequences, he will use the fire flower to shoot out fireballs, and then the ice one will shoot out a big ice ball. And you're supposed to basically use the opposite on on the other flower. Um, the ice one's easy. He shoots a big, like, rolling ice ball, and you basically play, you know, Ganondorf. Play, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you, you play the old Zelda back-and-forth tennis, yeah. Yep. And then uh, with the other one, it's a little bit more tricky. You have to take dust that shows up, put it next to the ice flower, and then have the fireballs hit the dust, and then the dust explodes, and it it's damages like, it. Yeah, four little things out. Yeah. So you have to line it up with the... Like, not... This game wasn't nearly as hard up until this point. No, this was a difficult fight. Like, I I, I, I tried, like, three times and died, and I'm like, okay, I'm obviously doing something wrong here. And you have to do this, like... I think he takes, like, six hits before he finally dies. Yeah, he's a... And he, and he gets harder as it goes along. Yeah. More yeah, things are coming, more things, projectiles yeah. are throwing, and stuff like that. I kind of so, wish there was more of this in the game, to be honest with you. Yeah, he saved it for the end. But you know what? I'm also okay with it just being me. <laughs> yeah, me it's too. one of those, like, I I kind of um, wish... And in and, and this game, it wouldn't work as well because you only have um, a broom and a jump. But uh, that's something that Zelda kind of lacks is like uh, on the two dimensional scale is the complex fighting. Like this is way more complex than most Zelda battles. Um, Zelda battles fall into the you have a new item, the guy has a glowy spot, hit the glowy spot, and then use your sword. And it's like that's fine. But the best Zelda battles, in my opinion, don't fall into that in the slightest. The best Zelda battles are like, here is an uphill battle, you have very little, go for it. Also using the environment. And using the environment. Are we both talking about Skyward Sword? I have not played Skyward Sword. The last battle in that game is one of the best battles, I might say, of all time. In Zelda? Yes. In Zelda, for sure. Um, it's got that game also has one of the worst bosses of all time. I thought about after uh the 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 what is it called? There's some big lizard sort of creature, and it grows legs and it walks up this uh, steep slope, and you have to fight it like three times, and every battle you have against it sucks. It just the first time it's like whatever fine and then they ask you to do it again and you're like I'm I'm not wanting to do this again and then the third time and you're just like fuck if you make me come back here and and the, I believe the second and third time there's like very little time in between either and you're just like fuck I just did this but the final boss battle of that game is so brilliant you do two boss battles back to back and both of them require like pure sword fighting. Gotcha. Okay. Um god damn. Anyways, the, the it's it's I like where it's like this is a skill like this is a test of skill. Like I think you the, the the problem with this game is that really you haven't had to be that skilled up until this point to finish. Um but I do appreciate the fact that they're like, you've gone through the game. We hope that you're a better player at the end of it. Yeah. We are not just giving you light arrows to shoot Ganondorf in the face. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it, it was definitely difficult. Um, but yeah, after beating Briar, um, basically, yeah, the sage shows up. He's like, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I wish things were different. <laughs> And um, Briar walks out into the ocean. Yeah, I don't know and, what body of wa- a body of water, a lake yeah. or something. And then you follow after him, and you start sinking like you do. So that's one thing we didn't mention: is that a mechanic in the game is you can't swim, but you can but walk you can on yeah, duck. <laughs> yeah, but well, you can walk on water for a short period of time, but you start slowly sinking. And if you sink, you lose a health, 
and you start back, basically get warped back to where you started walking again. The Zelda falling into like Link falling into holes. Zelda yeah. Mechanic. Well, so so here's the thing: you take damage if you drown. If you fall down a hole, you don't take any damage. Because yeah. let me tell you something: if you did, I would never finish this game. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah. But it, as you're as you're sinking, Briar comes back. He's like, "Dude, you have to pedal. You have to swim. You know, pedal your feet." <laughs> and so you you go off into the sunset. Yeah. And that's it. It's a weird ending to a it's weird the, game. It's a very weird ending. And then you get the credits. And, and then new game plus sort of starts automatically. Yeah, the game tells you, says, congratulations, you now have access to uh, everything that you've unlocked, um, including the Switch mechanic. And uh, you should go explore with the Switch mechanic. Have fun. Yes. And I was like, um, okay. So, do you have any theories about what the fuck's going on? Like, no. My only theory is that this game, like, if you want a plot summary, is that this game is about young learning how to have friends. Every boss you you come in contact to kind of insinuates, like, he plays a Nintendo, you're a loser, you, you know, go outside your comfort zone for once, and that the end of the game is that Briar and Young are now friends. Like, the whole... Okay. Because people are friendly... Some people are friendly to Young, but Young doesn't really respond, right? Sure. So, like, the um, uh, the girl on the bike whose name I don't remember. I think it started with the M. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Ma- her bike was named Wares? That's right. Because she uh-huh. pedals her Wares? Um, sh- she's friendly to Young, but Young isn't friendly back to her, right? And it's just like, well, Briar is antagonistic, and Young stands up to him, and it's just this weird, like, let's go off, and like that the voice of the um, God, the um, the mage, or sage, or whatever he is, I can't remember if it's sage or mage, sage, sage. um, like he's always the doubting character, right? Oh, right. no, no, don't go, don't go through it. You don't have enough cards yet. Oh, I hope you're happy. Oh, you're not going to be the hero. You have a broom. Like, it's, I think there's, there's little nods to certain things, but I think it's vague enough where it, they really are just saying, like, even if that's the case, it's just, that is not the point of this game. Because I think the point of this game is, like, the post game, where they're like, break this shit. Okay, so tell me of the post game because I did about, like I said, ten minutes of the post game, and so it... there's what thirty six cards? No, there's fifty two cards. Okay, how are you supposed to find those? So in there are like okay, so using the the swap tool, you can get into areas that you couldn't before. You've you've seen some of them. Because some of them are with, like, you'll be on a map screen, and you'll see a staircase or whatever, and there's a rock blocking the staircase. Sure. Well, if you took that staircase, it would go into a, a an area above the, the square you're on, but that area is not marked on the map at all. So you swap out the stone or whatever for, like, a standard grass panel. You walk up the stairs, and there's somebody waiting there for you. Sometimes it's one of those items that I kind of hinted at last podcast where they're not really there for the 100%. They actually don't account for anything, but it's just something you can do. Um, And you run into weirder characters. Like, these characters live outside the bounds of this game, essentially. Uh, what is nice is that this game tells you very quickly if you're going the wrong direction. This is where I go, just, if you use a walkthrough, go exploring first, and then use a walkthrough to get the rest of the cards you don't have. Um, because using the swap tool, you'll you'll sometimes break the game entirely, and I'll just show you glitched graphics, and that's your kind of sign to go back to where you were. Gotcha. Um... But yeah, I'm pretty sure you. Uh, can, I don't believe you. Can you talk to um uh rank, rank, rank? The, the, the link, link guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can talk to him. Okay, because I believe 
I don't know if you get his card before the end of the game, but like there's something that near him that that allows you to get out of ba- like there's an out of bounds area near him. Uh, you run into I believe a bear that gives you honey, and honey does nothing. But the, you run into a bear. That's where I told you that there is a rabbit that shows up on screen. Yeah, it's an out of bounds area. So when you walk in, you are on a tile of like forest. So like you're on a tree tile. You shouldn't be on able. You can walk off of it, but you can't walk back on it without swapping. Okay. And there's a chest in the middle of a pond. And then there's two gates in front of that chest. And they're like a piece of dust in front of that. There is no way to access the chest. So you have to let the controller sit and watch this bunny go across for two hours as he slowly goes down each and each. But it's these weird scenarios where they start playing. Like, it's it's that type of thing. Mind you, that one doesn't pay off because there's nothing in that chest worth, worth getting. But... Um, it, it's that type of stuff where they start real, like they start kind of just exposing, like, this is how the game works. Like, we have all this material, and I'm sure some of it was just like stuff that they didn't have a purpose for. Like, there's already so much in this game that just doesn't serve any sort of grander purpose. Like, a lot of the cube and, and pyramid characters from the weird, uh, polygonal land that you enter. Like, they're there for, for setting, but they're not there for plot. They're not there for solving puzzles. So, I think they've put a lot of that extra stuff outside of bounds and then said, you know what, let's do this with it. I have this swap tool at the end of the game. We'll just use that and let the player play around with the world. You end up in new areas with this swap tool. Like, areas that they built or left, I guess, whatever, just not in the main game. And that's when I was saying, they go through the, they, they actually have you like play through the debug room. Like that is, becomes an area in the game using the swap tool. Because it understands that it's a game. It's not playing this like, you know, like, like Zelda. Zelda is trying to sell you that the world of Zelda exists. Uh, even near, which is you know, um, kind of a wink and nod that the player is playing. Like it's near is still a story. Um, it, you know, the, the way that um, inscription is set up is that you are playing a game that exists, but is a game. Like it, it, it still is trying to sell you on the fact that the, the, like this game is like yeah, Young is just whatever a character that you're playing. This is now here's the tool. All these graphics are built off of a tile set, and now you can swap any tile for any other tile on the screen. And it really just like all that blocked you through every sort of experience in the like to get through a room what stopped you from getting through it a a tile you can now build bridges basically of tiles with two tiles you can walk across any gap go across any body of water it doesn't matter anymore so now they've given you all these other cards some they start off pretty normal and then they get weird the cards even explain uh, one of the cards, so normally the card is like a white card that has a border and shows you a little image. One of them is just the color red. Okay. Why? What's the description for it? I don't even remember if it has one. I don't think it has one. Like, it, the, the, it, it starts breaking down to, like, it doesn't matter, this is a game. And, like, it does it in such a unique way. And and I have to give credit, I, from what I've seen of Anodyne 2... They do it sort of again, but in a very different way um, than than Anodyne 1. And, and Anodyne 2 has a more cohesive narrative. Like, there's actually a beginning and end to the story. Um, with far more uh, fleshed out characters. I, I really need to play Anodyne 2 again, uh, like start it up again and finish it this time. Um but yeah, they're just like here's an as- here's a here's a, uh, an asset we never used. Here's a card done, and so it goes from like thirty six to fifty two, and there's still gates you're opening in these weird 
non spaces that you are in. Like you have to start solving harder puzzles because you didn't really solve any puzzles with the swap tool before. And now you have to use the swap tool for puzzles that the guy set out to reach the end end. And I'll 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 let you know right now, the ending is supposed to be a letdown. Okay. But it's so not like I'll tell you right now, it's you get fifty two cards and you get through the fifty two gate and it's a fifty three gate right after. And then that's it. There's, and there's yeah, there's no fifty third card. Even though you can't glitch the game, nothing opens with that gate. But to get the fifty second card or whatever it is, forty eighth card, I can't remember the exact number, but like to get the last card requires doing a glitch. It was okay. hard to do. Through this whole game, there's a wiggle glitch where the as you move from one screen to another, as long as it kind of scrolls into the next screen, and isn't just like a fade out because you're at the end of a map, right? You can move young left and right through that switching, and he'll move upwards in the maps. And you can I've, use that to get out of out of bounds. I've noticed I noticed that there were some glitches where like if I would if I fell through a hole during a transition, it would start me at the top of the screen and then I would kind of auto correct back to where I was supposed to be. Yeah, so what I again the, the, where I where I find the like what the fuck moment the developer knows that happens. The develop it's not necessarily built in like there was not an like, I believe he he's gone on record the the, the um coder um Melos uh he's gone on record saying like I knew that happened and I know why it happened um but it wasn't intentional but once I noticed it was there I did things with it and I'm like there's just this like weird like it breaks down and understands that like yeah the plot's pointless the whole goal was kind of to collect cards at the end of it right all these dungeons you did they didn't unlock anything they just opened new like you were just going through to new areas to get more cards like you don't receive anything in those dungeons that were like wow i needed this this key really those are not necessary like you were just going to get the no- the arbitrary number to open the gate. Right. And then, so basically, as the developer, he goes, all right, well, here's another gate. Not only is it harder to get to, because now you're using a mechanic that, again, is just this game-breaking tool. Like, it literally is almost like a dev tool that you have. Um, it, maybe that's what it was, too. Maybe it was a beta testing tool. Um, of like fine tuning areas, and you're using that to get through these these areas that are like seemingly unfinished, but are laid out in such a way that they like they they have to be made to be that specific, like only to get to the end. But like, it's just this like what the fuck game? Like, I've never seen anything like it, and I'm probably overhyping it, and I apologize, but like. I just don't know what other game just goes kind of like, fuck it, here's the behind the scenes, go for it, here's the tool that allows you to just move shit around, I don't care anymore, here's a bunch of cards, I'm not even making graphics for the final three, they're just fucking, they're RGB colors. Uh, okay. Alright. F- fucking, here, here's a room, and it, you just keep going and you have to swap the right thing because... Just figure it out. And it's like, what the fuck? And somebody did. And that's what's also crazy is like even watching, like even reading up to get like the final cards in this game. I was like, how the fuck did somebody find this? And it's like, and how did, how did somebody like realize that somebody was going to be able to find this? Like it doesn't, none of them feel so unfair to be like, how I was, how was I supposed to know that? Because I, 
don't like that type of shit. But it's like more like you you limited every option in such a way where it's like you kind of guided the player to eventually discover these. And like god damn, like finding the out of bounds areas that are not just glitch glitchy messes is satisfying. I love that part of like I found a bear, he gave me a useless item, but like I I found him. <laughs> like I I didn't really, you know what I mean? Like I didn't look up a walkthrough. I found him, but he was put there. Like, you know, it's kind of like every moment where you find coins in Super Mario Odyssey that are placed, again, in some random location where you're like, I am outsmarting Nintendo, and then there's coins laid out for you there. You go, there's a, even though they beat you to it, you feel satisfied. And it's like, this game has that feeling, but it's so much weirder because it's like, I'm breaking out of bounds, and you knew how to lead me here in such a way that it's just kind of ingenious. Like, there's nothing like I was disappointed with Anodyne 2 because it wasn't Anodyne 1. I finished Anodyne 1, it was like I'm playing 2 immediately. And was like, man, it's almost too solid of a game. Like it is it is not this like fe- like in hindsight feeling like it's held together with duct tape. It feels like a game like oh wow we actually put a bunch of polish into this like this is a consistent product and not just something that two people made in their spare time at yeah. school and that's what anodyne was anodyne was two people coming together and building something as students not for school but like after like they had graduated like it's this weird project that couldn't exist in the triple a space and really couldn't exist as any other medium you can tell a legend of zelda story but how the fuck do you show anodyne as a movie because again the plot is not the important part it's these breaking down of like this is what a video game is to its basic of basic levels they're tile sets and they move at will and there's a bunch of shit to collect and the story, who really gives a shit? Did you have fun? I guess that's all that matters. I don't know. There's something about this game that sticks with me and I think about a lot as I play plenty of games, Inscription being one of them. Anodyne is hard to nail down for me. Like, what is it singular? Like, what is the singular reason why I love it? I do like the art. I do love the music. Um, but, like, it's it's this weird amalgamation of just random concepts that come together and make something great. I, I'm sorry, I'm babbling. I just it, it's hard. To, how do I fucking sell this to someone? I feel like I've pulled teeth to get this done, and you're like, man, it's good, and it's like, yeah, but I can't explain the greatness. I lack the words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, dude, it's it's gonna be it, it, it's subjective on on how people feel about it, you know. I, I need to explore more of the 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 tile changing the stuff. I haven't I haven't done enough of that. Um, to me, I think it was a fine Zelda clone. That's, and it's that's... cheap. I, I I'm going to tell people right now. Like, I think they sell this game at ten dollars. I would not. I, I would pay ten dollars because I'm insane. Don't pay ten dollars for this. It regularly goes on sale for a dollar. I paid a dollar for this game. Buy that for a dollar, um, because yeah. somebody has to say it. Uh, it was free at one point too, and I've, I'm pretty sure it's been given away on like a bunch of those itch.io um, game bundles because something terrible has happened to humanity, and they're raising money for charity. Um, it's sad that I can't narrow down which one it would be, and there's been that many of them. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, it is an experience. I would say at this point, knowing kind of how you went through it, and I, I feel like part of that is that you were working on the time frame, and I didn't when I played it. I just kept going back by choice, and having to do things for review even can ruin the experience of something you love. Yeah, um, unfortunately. Or like, yeah. Um, I would say give it a try. I realize if you've come this far, you've pro- either played it or don't give a shit. 
Um, or why would you listen is what I have to say, but I get it sometimes. You need, you're at work. You need somebody to listen to. You've made the poor error and chosen us. Thank you. Um, but uh, there's at I least three see- people because we, we've had, I, I got two emails and then somebody oh, on Twitter, oh, somebody um, on Twitter was like, Hey, you guys had a fucked up recording last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one I'm sorry about for a completely different reason. Um, but, uh, that's just because, man, I don't know what's going on with our recordings. Um, well, but anodyne, anodyne, play with a walkthrough, and then just to get to the final game segment, it is very unique. Um, like I said, I know Anodyne Two does some similar esque stuff. Uh, again, using game mechanics and kind of expecting the player to uh, attempt to break the game. Um, I also have a, I should note, I also have an interest in. Um, not doing it, but watching speedruns, specifically the breaking down of game mechanics and understanding them. So a game that's like, yeah, here's the game mechanics. I've laid it out for you. Go for it. It's going to, you know, capture my attention maybe more than other people. And it's not for speedrunning. It's just, wow, I'm really surprised that a, a dev knew the faults of the system they were using. Yeah. Although there is an achievement in this game for beating the game 100% in three, in three hours. hours. All I'm going to say to that is, get fucked. I think that's the only achievement I don't have. And no. I just, I like Anodyne. The last thing I want to do is ever put myself through that type of shit. I yeah. do not like being rushed. Yeah, it is my only 100% and finish the game in under three hours. 100% the game under three hours is the name of the achievement. Um. Yeah. That ain't that ain't happening. No. Um, so it's it's uh, I, let me see here. The achieve, there's only five other achievements outside of that. A tool, which is finding the broom, change, which activate the windmill. That's my favorite song. I know I said it last week, but the recording was fucked. A meeting, which you defeated Briar. Hundred yeah. percent the game with thirty seven cards. You finish the game with over thirty seven cards. All the health and broom upgrades. And lots of cards. You found all 48 cards. So it's 48 that's the final number. There you go. So less to find in the, in the end game. But again, like there's some weird shit that they do in the end game. Um, don't, don't fuck around with the rabbit. See the rabbit and go, ha, huh, that's the rabbit he was talking about. And then just leave. Don't, don't waste your time. <laughs> it's, you get nothing. You literally get nothing. And I kind of appreciate that some devs will be like, if you're willing to waste your time, I'm more than willing to give you a platform to waste it. Um, like I said, Nintendo, Nintendo, if you collect all like what, 999 Korok seeds or whatever in a breath of the wild, they, they're literally like, we stopped giving you stuff a long time ago, but congratulations. You found all the Korok seeds. Here's a golden shit. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. You could show all your friends your golden shit. So we have two emails. What? Why was your recording fucked? No, this Boy, one's... Anthony, Anthony's not allowed to pick the game anymore. Also, <laughs> so the first one comes in from Dustin. It's titled Anno Die. <laughs> All right, and this is going to be positive, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel bad every time I select games where I'm like, I'm excited, and everybody else is. Like, I don't. Eh. I I I I no, that the was game. me with the whole sinking city. Right at the as we finished it, I went no, 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 no. The sinking city was still a good Dude, game. This, it is, it is, but it's just one of those like ah, we're having fun, we're trotting along, and I got to, as soon as I got to the ending, I went, I've let them down again because I Everybody's feel like be every time <laughs> they, I I pick bad games. <laughs> no, 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 it's not true. So uh, greetings and salutations, landlubbers. So yeah, Anodyne. What the hell was that? <laughs> I think Tony sold me and Drew on some snake oil of a game. <laughs> oh no, snake oil! It's the last thing I thought about. I thought I, I legitimately love this game. I'm sorry, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. such a bad description. It's so funny. It's how I feel. That's how I feel. I feel like I sold snake oil. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's just not even that word didn't even come to mind. Oh god! We were promised to see the Matrix, and all I saw was a glitchy <laughs> mess. <laughs> no. 
I'm getting ahead of myself. My history is I heard about this. I heard about it from some article and saw it on sale for a dollar and bought it. Then Anthony uh, mentioned the sequel, I think, and this game, and now randomly PD is doing it. Uh, game starts off fine. It's just another generic Zelda game, and I like Zelda games, so it was fun. I did uh, get lost a few times. I ended up getting the third key before the second, and Drew had to help me out on where to go for that. I didn't realize the Red Cave Dungeon. I had to free the tentacles. I thought they were just part of the room layout. You know what? I didn't even think about that, but you, that in hindsight, yeah, that's... So I'm the kind of person like who plays the Sinking City and aims my gun at everybody to see if I can shoot them. So I go around the room and just hitting everything with the broom. Yeah, I, I just... <laughs> I, you know what? There, There is... No, I'm not changing my mind. I still love Anodyne. There is... If I sold it as the perfect game, that was no, wrong. But I don't think did, I did you, that. No, you didn't. It's, I will say this, and because he brought up Anodyne 2, and I've brought up Anodyne 2 enough, Anodyne 2 is, again, a better game. But it's one of those scenarios where it's like, Anodyne 2 is fascinating. Weird, but actually makes sense. Like, because they've, they've established a lore in its own world this time. Um, but it does play off of the fact that it is a sequel to Anodyne. Like, there are blatant references to Anodyne. And so, it's one of those, do you skip it scenarios? And I, I don't know. I think part of the jewel, like, the way that they reference because it happens early on in Anodyne too. Um, Do you the way play that, as young? No, no, you play as a character who is. So first of all, it's a 3D game for the most part. Okay. So you are in a 3D. You're well, you exist in like a PlayStation One looking world. Okay. And you are born. You are like this. Um, I can't remember what the, what it's called. You're you're born from the seed essentially, and you are coming to cleanse New Thelend of the dust and the dust poisons people. So the dust gets in people and in their mind and they go kind of like crazy and they're not okay anymore. And it's like killing people and stuff. And so you have this ability to shrink down and enter people's heads. When you shrink down, now the game plays like the original anodyne, but they're all mini dungeons and they all are different themed. And so, like, one person's world may look like uh, an interior of a house, while the other person's looks like um, uh, forests or, like, you know, more generic. So, like, all these different people have different minds, essentially. So and you go like in. Psychonauts? Uh, sort of, without sense of humor, really. Okay. Um, and and let, Psychonauts has, like, a whole idea of like psychics so like their minds have to be clean this is more like you're going in and you're cleansing people of these dirty uh intrusive thoughts right essentially like the dust it, it's implied that the dust is a negative thing that exists in the world and you are going and cleaning it out that is kind of your role you are cleansing new Thelen. Um it's got a lot of weird shit in it. Like, if you look at the characters, they're they're bizarre looking. It feels like something that would exist in a PlayStation One era. Um, but it's New Theland, which you break it down, and it's New the Land. The Land being the place that Anodyne takes place in. Why is it New Theland? Why do, Why is there a New the Land? And it's sort of covered from my understanding. Um, okay. later on um, but again it's doing it does these weird moments where you're like what's going on is this game is aware that it's a game and you need these tokens but like tokens are placed out of bounds like what characters are placed out of bounds that you need to talk to later on but you don't get a swap tool this time so it's playing with the mechanics of the game to understand like Oh, you can just play this game straight. 
but you want to see the extra stuff, don't you? And I do know that some of the extra stuff in that game is like maybe even weirder than Anodyne. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's a it, it's a better game. I will say that. But again, it's like I love Anodyne, and I I was looking for more Anodyne one, which apparently no one else has um, <laughs> played it with us. But um, you know, again, Anodyne two better game. If you liked Anodyne, and you're like, I really like the segments where I was playing more of a Zelda game and not some weird fucking indie experience. Uh, there's a lot more of that in two. Plus a weird rhythm game that you have to do to enter people's minds that I don't understand why it's there, but it's there. Sorry, continue. I've now deviated from the email. No, it's okay. Um, Said after that, I had no trouble with the rest of the game. I was irritated with Anthony talking about stuff we hadn't even seen yet, like how there's a carnival area and stuff. But in reality, I didn't realize I was even in the carnival area until I freed someone named the trapeze artist or juggler or something. It didn't really look like a carnival. Hey, sorry, but the only reason why I called it, like specifically, I called it the carnival, not because it necessarily looks like a carnival, but that's the theming of the characters inside. Well, it's so, also called the circus, I think. Yeah, I think so too. But I don't know if that's a weird, jokey thing that it looks like the inside of a cave <laughs> type of thing, or yeah. if it's just we've drawn these cave walls. I don't. Maybe. I don't know. Does it again? Does it does it matter to the gameplay when the story is really trying to be obtuse? I don't think so. No, how to <laughs> ha, what opinion to have on that aspect? But you're right. It doesn't look like Carnival at all. I apologize for spoiling that. I I should have asked Drew that off air, not on. It's okay. I'm surprised you made that out when we were overlapping, anyways. Yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, the hotel well, I'm just was. Keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> the hotel was a little confusing, but not too bad. None of the bosses posed much of a challenge except Briar, which was a fun fight and took a little bit to figure out the patterns. I managed to beat him after a couple of tries and rolled credits. So now either I'm missing something or Anthony has a lot of explaining to do. And maybe I'll be enlightened. Uh, he said that there was something about 75% through that lets you see the matrix of the game and how the developer knew the engine so well, it was genius, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Did I miss it, or was he talking about the tile swap ability? So the tile that, swap ability is part of it. Yeah. And he said, that's nothing new to games. Also, was seeing the matrix in reference to swapping pixel tiles to go out of bounds of the world map, so it's a glitchy mess? No. I, the glitchy so, mess is there to tell you that you're in a spot where you could brute force it out. You can brute force yourself out, but like the point is, like, yeah, you, you, you're out of bounds and you're not really looking in the right area. Right. So I wandered that area and didn't find anything cool. I thought I have to. I have to miss something because this is just dumb and looking online. I only found additional cards and items that reference other games they made as the only post-game stuff to do. I don't care about collecting cards. I'm playing on Switch, so I don't even get achievements. Oh, yeah. That, I I didn't realize this game. You know, maybe, did I know the second one is, I think. Maybe I've seen it on there. Yeah, because you on Xbox you get achievements. But, yeah, that would suck. Um. I, yeah, the tile swapping ability isn't, like, purely this game, although I think this game does it, like, pays off the most interesting way. Um, because, it, again, like, you see certain things as you go through this game that, like, I wonder if I could get there, and the swap tool allows you to get there, and again, there's these moments where you're like, I'm sure there's nothing but a glitchy mess, and then you get there and it's not. And I'm like, yeah. oh, so that was intentional. Like that wasn't just a thing you did by accident. And again, there's the the glitch, and I don't I'm not gonna tell you where it is, but there's a glitch to get one of the cards that you requires you to like first of all, don't understand how the glitch works. Like I understand the, the I understand that I did the glitch and like I understand how that part worked. I don't understand how someone figured out 
that the glitch allows you to move upwards. I guess a speedrunner or somebody figured that out. But the dev already knew about it and used that as one of the final card locations. And it's just like weird that way. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, it's like, oh, here's the engine. Yeah, it's it's not, you know, the the most stable thing ever. No. And I know that. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just very, I don't know, there's a very, bit, like, there's some weird level of honesty. The fact that, like, to even get to that point, you're going through um, uh, testing rooms of shit. Yeah. And you're just like you see his notes scribbled uh, like with with MS Paint or whatever, and you're just like, what, what, like why? And it's just like, yeah, because it's all here. Like, there's I don't know if anything was removed from Anatine, <laughs> and maybe that's to a fault. But I find that fascinating. That like, yeah, everything's just kind of on the table. It's but weird. if you're playing on Switch, maybe that's a bad time because there is no achievements. <laughs> and yeah, I, if you're not getting something out of it. I'm just glad I only only cost people a dollar this time and not like fifteen or twenty. Stop. Oh, dude, the, the sinking. What, I'm just gonna say it. The sinking city's ending was was fucking bad. It, it was. was. It was Call it, of Cthulhu you're... levels of bad. But Call of Cthulhu, you at least got to see Cthulhu. Uh, you know, but the sinking city was a fun time. It was the journey, not the destination, man. I like, hate I, that. The journey to Disneyland is not more interesting than Disneyland. The ending should have been Disneyland, is all I'm going to say. The, uh, you know, if, I, if if you played a Zelda game and at the end, the fucking you know, Hyrule Castle fell from the sky and landed on Link, you'd be like, maybe you laugh the first time, but then it would be like, you lose. You'd be like, well, what the fuck was that? So, like, I don't you know, if the destination is unclear, I understand that maybe the journey is more interesting. Look at Andine. But, like, you know, I wanted a giant creature, and what I saw was bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. The sinking but City. The sinking at, least say, Cthulhu, I... at least Call of Cthulhu had a really cool Cthulhu, even though you only see it for, like, a split second. Yeah, two seconds. But it was cool. Anyway. Both after chat. After chatting with Drew of my confusion and dissatisfaction, he sent me a link that maybe Anthony sent to him. I don't know, but it's a side quest. I talked to all those idiots already, so I just went down the steps to uh, talk to the light and then found the tower, and this place sucks. It's so easy to go to the next screen just to get stuck and have to save and quit and reset everything. Talk about annoying. I found a room with a card of young went down two screens and got an instant game over. What the hell is the point of this area? Looking online, I could only find two cards, and that's the reason this area exists, but Drew decided to send me on a wild goose hunt for a hidden boss that never existed since this, his game must have glitched and didn't give him a boss achievement. So that is my mistake. I didn't know this. I didn't know you were doing it live while I was sending this to you, Dustin. Um. So the game glitched on me, apparently. Oh, and no. When I beat the 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 rogue boss, the the boss in the blood dungeon, yeah, I didn't get the achievement for it, and so I was thinking, oh, this is there must be another boss in the game, and so I, that's why I told Dustin, I was like, well, I, I haven't beat a boss apparently, so maybe it's at the end game stuff. Okay, I I'm sorry I misled you. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd be pretty pissed too. <laughs> The blind leading the blind here. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I, I'm I'm sorry. I really... I think my biggest regret with this is not even recommending it. That... Whatever. I'm going to recommend bad, bad shit. We've all learned by now. I guess it's the best way to play this. That's, that's Anthony's suggesting it. Anthony's suggesting it. Huh. <laughs> Take that with a fucking pound of salt. Um, but uh, I should have... And this is where I kick myself. I should have written a walkthrough. I should have gone back through, should have written what you should have to do, done it without spoiling it. That way, if you wanted to play along, you could deviate, you know, and, and not listen to it. But if you needed to go back, it was a point by point thing. And that way it wouldn't have spoiled anything and you would have gotten through it a lot easier. 
Um, I regret that more than anything. Um, because, like the video I sent to Drew, watching somebody fumble around is not helpful at times. <laughs> I mean, it helped me out because he actually beat the game. So it just took me a while of skipping. You know, I'd, I'd hit uh, double click right to go 10 seconds. I was like, All right, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Um, so here he says, anyway, it's a fun little Zelda game that takes five hours and everything past the final boss just soured me on it since I thought I was going to get some massive revolution of God knows what, or even a secret boss or ending, but only got a buggy mess. Oh, also whatever they were going for with dungeons of dead people and copies of young or whatever artsy horse shit they were trying to pull didn't come close to hitting the mark. <laughs> I really hope I get a good rebuttal or explanation of what I just played. Besides that, it was a fun $1 spent, Dustin. Okay, well, I, I'm i glad that you at least feel that you got your dollar's worth. Again, you know if I'd have paid it's, five bucks, I, I would have enjoyed five it. Five bucks is the limit, Drew. Ten yeah, bucks probably. for most people, I could totally see them going, what the fuck did I just play? Although, I would still argue you've probably paid more for worse. However, that's not a great defense. I'm just saying I've I've bought Sonic 06 twice, all right? Oh, God. Um, actually, that's, that's a lie. I've bought Sonic 06 three times. Because <sighs> I traded my original copy on Xbox. Anyways, um, I, I just think that this game has that, like, the, the final section where it starts showing its hand was fascinating to me. And it, it maybe it has been done in other games before. I just think that like the fact that the developer sort of acknowledges all aspects of the game is neat. I I think there's something special to that. Um, obviously, they thought that like both um, both developers, um, both the uh, artist um, and writer, and uh, the actual. Um, programmer and uh composer uh they both thought this was a strong enough thing to continue on with not just in name only but in certain themes and aspects um i don't know anodyne is again it exists in this weird space of like it's something very different from everything else because most zelda like games if they're good um because the bad ones just are bad I, I there's nothing really to say to them um they still try to be like zelda like um i think the only one that really deviates is is blossom tales and blossom tales still looks like a zelda game right yeah. it's not doing something different like as much as this game looks like zelda it doesn't it chooses to do a lot of weird things artistically um, like young looks very modern yet and the world doesn't feel like it's medieval but it doesn't feel like it's modern either like you know you're walking through and there's you're walking through this dark area that's like a destroyed road but then you're like in like the forest and farmland and, and fields and there's just a fisherman and you know animals talk and stuff and it's just like what the fuck's going on yeah what is this game and most Zelda games don't do that. And again, um, the only thing that kind of deviates um, a Blossom Tales is that there's a narrator that's changing the story on you. So, gotcha. but it's it's still just Zelda. And uh, maybe maybe this is a call for more Zelda like games that aren't just fucking fantasy. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, I, I I think there's a lot to this game that unfortunately is a very me game at the end of the day. <laughs> And me games aren't everybody games, um, but I do think that the the final aspect. If you go into the glitchy realms and you're only finding the glitchy spots, yeah, it's a bad time. Like it, it's nothing worth seeing. But uh, there are certain spots of the open world that kind of lead you to certain areas where you'll find other cards. But if that's not your jam, then I would bail immediately because yeah. <laughs> that's all that this game has to offer. It's just doing very weird things to get them. Yeah. Also, I'd love to know. Um, obviously, send a message to Drew because I'm not online anywhere, uh, Dustin. Um, but uh, what other game had a swap tool? I, I'm not denying that the 
doesn't exist. I just can't think of them, and I'd love to actually see them in action because uh, maybe I overhyped that because to me that was really original. But if it's being used in other stuff, um, I'd love to see how it works. Basically, there you go. Next po- uh, email. <laughs> fucking audio shit. I know. Oh man, it comes there from Jason. It says uh, the weirdest podcast ever. But like a traffic accident, I couldn't turn away. (laughs) It says, hey guys, the Anodyne episode was the weirdest podcast I think I have listened to as the audios were not synced. Here was my journey through the podcast. And this is not the, you know what, you know why this hurts? Because this isn't the first time it's happened in the last little while. Uh, So (laughs) I'm going to try and read this verbatim. Anodyne. Never heard of it, but let's see where this goes. Wait, what what did Anthony say? I must be missing some context for what Anthony is saying. Why are they talking over each other? (laughs) Why is no one saying anything? This game has a big reveal the Matrix moment. Okay, I get that. What is with this podcast? Um... Are they messing with us and and intentionally doing this? Thinking of Xenosaga continuation episode? Is that is that another voice talking in the background during the during the quiet moments? Are they going to do a ha ha here's our reveal the matrix moment with some great insight to the game? Still thinking of the Xenosaga continuation episode and thinking it may be something related to precognition or something very meta. Oh crap, it's just out of sync. Confirmed by hearing 51. Pause. How old was he? Okay, this is a mess, but I can't stop listening. (laughs) I finally clocked it. At the end where you were announcing your names again, Anthony announced his name 12 seconds before Drew paused to let him in. (laughs) I was just laughing at the craziness of it. (laughs) It's like outsider art or some shit. Oh my right? god! Oh, uh, you, you know, in hindsight, fucking hell, we should have done a weirder game, right? And, and, and just had it purposely out of sync. Fuck. Yeah, that was the thing. Is like because he mentions the Xeno Saga continuation, so we did that. I don't know, like I don't know if were you with the website when that happened, but uh, early... yeah, no, I. So so hold on, I can tell you. You uh, you brought it up. I'll tell you. So when I joined. The meme still was. When are you going? When are you to finish Xenosaga? And eventually, you just said, "Fuck it," and did it. (laughs) Yeah, and we didn't tell anybody it beforehand, and we just we we were on like episode fifty something, and then we went back to episode twelve point something, and me and Matt didn't even acknowledge it. We just started talking about Xeno (laughs) Xeno Gears again. Xeno Gears, right? 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 Xeno Gears, yeah. Like when when's episode twelve point six or something like that, and we just did it. And I think it was twelve point seven. I can't remember. It might have been I think it was twelve point seven because I, I believe it was a seven that everybody kept fucking shitting on you with. I know, but yeah, no. I, then I, as soon as you finished, Jay was like, "So when are you doing Xenosaga?" Yeah, when you're doing Xenosaga, never, never. Anyway, uh, it said, uh, uh, "I can't wait to hear what the big reveal is." Uh, in this game, as I'm not not likely to pick it up, but what whether it is good or not, thanks for the entertainment. <laughs> Keep gaming, Jason. Thank I'm you, Jason. S- I'm 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 sorry, Jason. A because I'm sure that'll let you down. And B, man, fucking audio thing. I don't know what happened. I'm wondering if it's me at this point because it sounds like it sounds like I was the problem. The, I, I, I'm the problem, but for a different reason. Um, it sounds like the main podcast had the same issue, um, ZT, uh, the N4G podcast, um, where I was for some reason out of sync, and I don't fully yeah, but, know but it, it wasn't why. just you though. It wasn't just you oh, though. Was it? it was it was uh, Terrence was also out of sync as well. And I don't I don't fully understand why because we do clap and we do the thing and then like, we hit record see, at the exact same, exact same time. time and I so bre- speaking of breaking down the fourth wall you're stuck with us this fucking long for a game you probably don't give a shit about or you do or you played it and you're like I don't know what the fuck that was a waste of time I guess it was a decent Zelda game um 
So here's how we're recording it tonight. So we used to have fucking Craig, and Craig was a little chatbot that would record our podcast. Craig shit the bed one day, and it was a nightmare. Then we just went to Ken recording everybody. It's fine. That's fine. However, like, I don't want to listen to that. Um, Partially because, like, Ken has to record himself and then everybody else separate. So there's still syncing that has to be done, although it's pretty simplistic. Um, But there's other issues that can come along with that. Normally it's fine, but I've noticed some certain things of, like, you know, you can hear him clicking or whatever. Um, because he's got to mute himself if he's got a cough or whatever. So how I'm doing it tonight, although you'll hear us click anyways, if the mic doesn't mute before the click of the mouse happens anyways. So what we're doing tonight is that I have two discord accounts and I'm using discord on my laptop as the where I'm chatting. And then my main desktop is just recording all the sound that comes through its system via stereo mix. So I have both of us, and if this fucks up, I swear to God, I'm never recording another podcast again. I'm saying that for a fact. I will just quit. I can't. It's good right now, and I'll be very pissed off. I know a bunch of people just went, please, God. But um, it looks really good from my end right now, and that might be the way we switch to recording just in general. Because yeah. everybody then sounds the same, and I can kind of see where everybody's volumes are and adjust if someone's quiet. Um, but that's how we've had to switch things. So it won't be doubled up this episode, and I will see about figuring out how this works for the future. But we have just had a nightmare, because we used to record via Skype all all of it, right? Dude. I think when I joined uh, yeah, I was using team. But I think we were using Skype still, right? Yeah, we were still using Skype. I didn't switch to this until my Skype recorder started screwing up. Like, yeah, like, so... Like two years ago, or not, not even two years ago, last year, like in 2021, me and Matt were still recording on Skype using Skype recorders, and they would just randomly just stop working, and, and like, you, I'd lose the podcast, you know? And then me and Matt would lose, like, 20, 20 minutes of talking, and then we'd be like, okay, well, we we'll have to go back and talk about what we just talked about, and yeah. you know, we'd be unenthusiastic, and it was just garbage. Like, uh, I still to this to this day, I don't know how professional podcasters do it. So, basically, like a professional podcast is usually done in the same room. Yeah, true. Um, there is pro- there are programs that will so like your computer when you go to your like volume. I don't, I'm not only speaking for PCs. I don't know how Mac works. I apologize. But if you go to playback devices, you can see all the playback devices showing what's playing, and what's making noise. Um, but if you go to your volume and actually go to the volume mixer, they'll show you like, oh, here's the sound from Mozilla Firefox. Here's the sound from your audio app. Here's the system sounds. Here's your speakers and all that stuff. There are applications for recording video and audio where they will take all the everybody has to be logged into it, but it will save everybody as a different channel. So that's a professional option. Um, there's something like kind of what I'm doing, which is kind of a makeshift soundboard where everybody's kind of getting sent to one central server, and that central server is then recording. Um, a lot of uh, streamers do that, where um, a commentator needs to be synced up with the person playing. Well, the person playing. If the person's watching on stream, it doesn't work. So they'll actually have a direct link to each other by going to one central server, watching as that person's sending to the central server. And then from that central server, the stream gets sent out to everybody else watching. Um, It's a pain in the ass. Um, And that's a reason why, like, a lot of podcasters do more than one podcast and, you know, open a Patreon and stuff and kind of do it as a job because it's a lot of work. Um, You know, but with this we don't have to fucking clap and try to you know get everything perfect because something goes out of sync and i don't know exactly what yeah wow that was a lot of boring conversation for people that don't give a shit about how the podcasts are made i apologize that's 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 the thing we go through that's how the the sausage is made that's right the the when we used to stream years and years and years ago um you can go back and look at that stuff if you want to um we did a 
uh, a kind of like a video podcast with me and my roommates and everything would go wrong every week, everything. And I remember I was a guest host on a podcast where a guy would interview somebody and I was friends with him on Twitter for a long time. And he's like, Hey, you know what? You've never been on my show. Why don't you come on my show? And he's like, well, tell me about yourself. And I was like, well, I'm a podcaster and I'm a, I'm also a, a vidcaster. And back then we were on Justin TV. This was live streaming was brand new. Before In Twitch. Fact, yeah. It way was before. What? It was, it was Justin TV was the smaller one and it was you stream. You stream. Yeah. We switched to you stream for one, one single episode and it was garbage. You stream and- was not user friendly. No, but not at I think all. it could, I think it could support more people. Yeah. Um, the 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 Justin yeah. TV, which eventually turned into Twitch, like I, I mean, I'll go ahead and say it. Like me and my roommates were like some of the first people to live stream, like video games, especially. What year was that? Uh, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Wow. Okay, yeah, because I two thousand ten is when I was like, oh, Justin TV exists. Yeah, that was so. It was like two thousand. It was either oh eight, oh nine, and two thousand ten was like when we were doing it, and so we were kind of like one of the first ones. And I remember on that 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 podcast where he was interviewing me, he said, "So how long did it take you guys to get like um like a setup that worked, you know, like a, consistently?" I was like, "We still haven't had one. What are you talking about? Like it, it, ha- it something happens every week. We screw up every week. We, there was one time we streamed for four hours with no, no audio. audio. <laughs> Didn't even know it. Didn't even know that's it. Like, that's like um uh, the uh, the professor that was uh, doing um." God damn, it's not Skype. What's the what's the one that everybody uses now? Teams? Uh no. It's um, the other one. Oh, uh, 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 uh Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, doing the Zoom uh call or whatever with all the students and didn't realize he was he was muted the entire time. That's I mean, that 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 was like our stuff. And if you do want to go back and look at that stuff, you can look at my Twitch channel, which is um uh, I think Frustrated Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Twitch, twitch.tv slash Frustrated Fury. Some of our good stuff's on there. I mean, it's horrible 480p garbage. You can't really make out anything. All of our, we, we had a, our, our show was called the Rage Quit Radio. And, um, you, all of our episodes are still there. You can see us sitting around a, a horrible. These are the guys that you were like, was this around the time that you caught the bird flu? Yes, swine flu. Yeah, swine flu. Swine flu. Yeah. Ah oh, man, they're yeah, like an animal flu. It was horrible that that day. But um, yeah. No, it, in fact, we streamed that night that I was suffering from it. Alan, my my roommate Alan would um, he worked at GameStop, so he was able to just check out games and take them home. And for some reason, he really wanted to try out this this new Harry Potter game that was on like the Wii, I believe, at the time. And so when I was suffering from swine flu and and having fever dreams and stuff, I also had like Harry Potter crap on like in my face all the time. So that's that's a wonderful memory. Um that was that was horrible. But yeah, it, it, podcasting everybody and their brothers got a podcast, but it, it's still difficult to do sometimes. It's difficult, and I think, and and I guess this is uh, inside baseball for how I feel. I hate silence, and the, the way we do a podcast, um, there is no time for silence, right? Like, there's no editing afterwards, so we can't really, so, you know, um, you can't really cut out the silence part of it, so you just get this uncomfortable, and that drives me nuts. Yeah. I... All I can think of is, like, if I was listening to this, I'd be like, are they staring at each other? What the fuck's going on? And yeah, no. That's... The very little training I have on, on doing video and audio stuff is, like, you know, silence is a tool. Uh, not not really the thing you want in a podcast. Um, You know, the ambience of just the room <laughs> getting picked up, although that's not a, really a thing you get on most podcasts anymore. But um, it makes me uncomfortable. So then I start talking. We all know how that is. Um, and, you know, I want to be entertaining. 
which I think is the part that's the hardest out of all of it. Because uh, even if you have the best tech, good God, you want to... Part of you is like, I want to be me, which I am, but you also want to be entertaining, which might be, you know, not the same thing necessarily at all well, times, depending on how you feel. And I'm not even saying, I'm like, I'm not even putting myself down in this scenario. It's like, first of all, taste. Second of all, um, you know, everybody has off days and God knows what's been going on. So then you're like, I'm going to go do a podcast and I'm, and, and, and the, what's nice is we're, none of us are obligated to do it. I think no. Ken is the only one that's, and Ken's mi- had to miss a couple. I remember you re- had to record one. Yeah. Um, I think it's the only time I've been on where Ken hasn't been. Um, but it's like, you know, it, it isn't like a mandatory, I show up and do it. I want to do it. I want to talk to people about it. Um, I try not to, fucking run my mouth as much as i used to i think i'm getting better that's the thing is like is is what we're i think what works for us and for n4g is that it's we're not professionals we're not getting paid for this we're just a bunch of guys who enjoy each other's company and like talking about video games in the the gayest way yeah i mean sometimes sometimes you don't finish sometimes you do sometimes you don't (laughs) fake it (laughs) Yeah, but but uh, yeah, missed, yeah, everybody that's listening that doesn't want to in the mainstream. Um, I but I have to tell or to main podcast. But uh, Drew, you you missed me, uh, uh, getting uh, horny on Maine, uh, whatever the fucking kids use nowadays for um, uh, Lucy Lawless. Lucy she's Lawless, Zena, Zena. Yeah, she's still hot. Yeah, no, she was in uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Yeah, and she was hot in that. She was. And, you know, I was criticized. But I, I also misheard what Terrence said. Terrence was talking about the Xena game where you throw your chakra. And I thought I heard him say, fill your chakra. And I made a joke. And I was like, that is not what he said. And I'm like, all right, well. <laughs> oh, that's fine. It's fine. Bum, 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 bum. I've said plenty um, of things on a podcast that I just, probably shouldn't have. <laughs> it's just, uh, it is, it is. Weird. God, we've gone way too inside baseball on this. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're, we're is, like, this is our show. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, to. yeah, I know. But you can it, turn us off right now. You, y'all should. Um, but uh, yeah, I know. It's just it's it's this weird thing where it's like we are in a scenario where it's like we are all remote. I think the only people that could really feasibly record together are Terrence, Ken, and Ryan. Yeah, and that's and, that's still an ordeal. And that's still an ordeal. Yeah. That means driving around, finding a spot to record, trying not to look sad as you're all men in your 40s doing a podcast with video games, trying not to make eye contact. That's the biggest part about doing a podcast. Um, You don't have to see the shame in other people's eyes while you talk about Sonic at length, like I did. Uh. Because that conversation in real life deserves shame. <laughs> I Let me explain to you the lore of Sonic and just everybody's eyes are glazing over and you're like, okay, all right, well. well are we That's all right. About... Terrence was like, damn, I asked if you, I was going to ask you if it was good, but I don't know where the fuck you're going. <laughs> Correct, Terrence. Welcome to I only get to talk about a Sonic game once every 10 years. <laughs> That's yep. good. But yeah, I mean that's that's basically it. I mean I hope you guys enjoy it. I mean I, I think we do. We have our we have our small group of loyal listeners, um, and we would love to hear from you, which is a nice little segue into if you'd like to send us an email, it is drew at ztgd dot com. Shout out to us, guys. I want I want to hear from you guys. If you're listening to this show right now, just send me. Even if you just send me say hey, I'm listening. That's all you guys send. I'm just curious. Who out there is actually listening to us? I know we get some emails. We have our dedicated listeners. Yeah, Dustin, and, and Dustin's, uh, Dustin and Chad are pretty big on sending in emails to uh, Phoenix yeah. Down. Yeah, Jamie is too. Oh, uh, Jamie, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard from Jamie in a while. I hope everything's okay. Um, I'd love to have you join in on us on some games again. Um, and uh, we have we have our we have our good listeners out there, and and I'd lo- I'd love for you guys to to reach out to us and just let us know, even if it's not even about a game. Listen, just... I've had I've had my spats with, with certain listeners. 
Sorry, Dustin. Um, <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. It, f- flashback. Um, it, it's it, it, to to like uh, uh, the conversation we were just having. Um, it's I wouldn't even say it's difficult to put yourself out there. It's just like I I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty honest, so it's it's harder to kind of put something between you and the criticism that is fair sometimes, right? Like it, not all of it's. I'm not that person that's like, oh, this criticism is wrong. It's just, it doesn't make it harder to swallow, or easier to swallow, I should say, knowing that, like, you know, yeah, you know, some of this criticism's, you know, maybe unfair, but that, like, yeah, but there's some of it's definitely fair still, too. Like, m- most people are not spending their days just shitting on people. There are some, uh, but most people are not. I, well, uh, my, God, my... Oh, please don't prove me wrong, um, internet. My thing is, is that like when it, when it comes to this podcast, especially I made this podcast. So Phoenix down existed before Phoenix down existed. Um, me and Matt used to do, Matt had a website called zombie frog and he had a game club and I, Matt Quinn is one of my oldest friends. I have known him since like 2007 and me and him have talked on message boards and then we joined Twitter together, and he invited me on his game club, which was probably listened by two people max. He was at your wedding. He was at my wedding. Like, like the the, the dude is like one of my best friends. And um, when I left the website that I was working for to go work for ZTGD, I I asked Ken. I was like, "Hey, me and a friend of mine used to do this podcast where we played a game, almost like a book club." And I was wondering if you'd, you'd be willing for us to do something like that and have it on ZTGD. And he's like, absolutely, go for it. And I invited Matt. And I, that was that was the weirdest thing was like that transition period was about a year. I didn't talk to Matt. Like I I, I barely talked to the guy. Like I talked to him on Twitter occasionally. And he he went off and did his own thing, and I did my own thing. And then I, I asked him, I was like, hey, you want to you want to join me for a game club thing again? I'm, I'm thinking about starting something up. And then we, that's when we started Phoenix Down. In fact, I think the first episode, I don't even think we had a name. I think we were just calling it like the ZTGD Game Club or something like that. And we finally came up with Phoenix Down because, you know, we're, we're resurrecting games and stuff like that. And, um, it just, it grew, it, it kept going and, and we're still doing it 10 years later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, th- this show is basically me and my friend talking to each other. Because that's 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 when we talk to each other. I mean, you that's know? the reason why. Oh God, I feel like we're inflating the podcast again. Cause I'm pretty sure I did it recently too. Although maybe no one heard it because maybe it was the podcast where just all of our audio was overlapping, and I sounded like I was answer- I was answering Terrence's questions like I was a precog. Um, but uh, you know that that's the reason why I liked you know M4G podcast. That's the reason why I drew you as Captain Google. Like, it was like, oh, these guys are just guys. Like, I don't, you know, everybody else is like, oh, I'm going to put a layer between me and, you know, and I guess kind of I've done that because I've left Twitter, so no one can directly shit on me, but it had nothing to actually do with anybody that listens and has criticized me. It's more of, like, the external people on the internet that don't like anything. I can't deal with them anymore. Well, that's yeah, that's Twitter for you. But that's that, that's a that's a different conversation. It, it literally was like just like oh yeah, these are just guys that talk about things. And then I'm like, wow, I'm hearing a lot about Overwatch. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was funny though. Like I remember Overwatch, and around the same time, I want to say you were playing. Uh, it's not Xeno Gears. Xenoblade Chronicles X, because I remember that being a game that multiple uh, people were playing. Yeah, which is really, weird because it's a Wii U game. Who the fuck? It's, it's, it's stuck there. Apparently, that's one of my like. That's yeah. one of the games I loved, and I was like, God, I really wish I could play it. But that's the, but that was one of the ones that I remember because I think you and Jay and John, who I thought John was like the youngest person on the staff, um, was uh, you know, playing, and I don't remember uh, other games being talked about. I remember again thinking Ken and you were a thousand pounds each. Um. Yeah. At one which, point, I was I was hefty. Yeah, I've, I've lost in, that weight. Yeah, you have lost that weight, and um. But it's just like it was one of those like I think it was Ken, Ken's cough, and then you'd be like, I'm, and let's talk about Taco Bell meals, which we haven't done on the main podcast in a while. God 
Damn it. Who are I, we? I haven't had Taco Bell in two years, dude. No, I'm I, talking about <laughs> talking about food in general. Oh, yeah, um, sure. But I'm, anyways, I'm talking about the healthy stuff I eat now. But <laughs> And that's the reason why I like, you know, that when you invited me, God, what, what was the first Phoenix Down we did together? I don't oh, remember. jeez. I can't even uh, remember. I remember now. the first one I messaged in for. I think I was writing at the site. I don't know if I was on the podcast yet, but I did write in for Alan Wake, which I really enjoyed. That was uh, uh, Sophie was with me on that one. Yeah, yeah, it was a Nano Rimo month as well. That's right. Um, God, I can't remember the first because I don't remember if it was you invited me on for Nano Rimo when Matt was gone or not. I can't remember. Um, I'm looking at all the ones I was part of though as I go through like. The bad year, the the year of the bad uh, game. You joined us for the whole thing, but am, you were with us. You you joined us before that. Yeah, I joined in 2017. Yeah, um, which is the same year you were, did Xeno Gears. By the way, so, that was Look yeah. At that. So it was 2012 when you you stopped doing it, <laughs> and then you did it in 2017. But I I was on the site when you did it. That I remember. Uh, Phoenix Down Intermission 31. Drew and Ken finally take an opportunity to talk nothing but Overwatch. Right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Deadly Premonition. Gene Rain. Two Human. Perfect Weapon, which I think was our worst game of that, that year. Most certainly was. Call of Juarez, The Cartel, Terminator Salvation. Um, we did Intermission 29 together because Matt was out. Mind Jack. Oh, Mind Jack. Oh, Mind Jack, Bound by Flame, which was a fun time. Uh, oh yeah, we did Intermission Twenty Seven, where we shit on Naughty Dog for an hour and a half. Oh God! Uh, Duke Nukem Forever, Eat Lead. The first one was Sonic like Six. Uh, intermission Twenty Six, where we talk about bad video game movies. Uh, oh my god. No, it was no our first bad game was uh, Unearthed Trail of Even Batuta. That's right. And, and I was thinking did. this is gonna be a fun time. And oh, then how we did, and then we did Dark, and that's when things started to go downhill. Yeah. Dark. I I love you know the poorly implemented stealth segments of an action game? That but an entire game. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Secret service, we decide the present isn't worth taking bullets <laughs> for in this game. Oh, uh, man. damnation! We feel pretty damned in the steampunk shooter. Damnation point one: we don't finish it, but we're finished with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, haze, guns, drugs, and unnecessary war. Fun for the whole family. Haze point one: we bring death to Montel Williams. I don't even get that reference now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What the fuck did you say? Um. Uh, quiet man, we couldn't hear this game, but we shouldn't see it either. <laughs> uh, man, God. we got some zingers. Uh, I did Red Dead Redemption with you. Yes, right. We did Red Dead Redemption. Um, maybe that was the first one. Was that the first one? No, Radiant Historia. I think I was going to join you with uh, join f- with uh, Dead Space Two, Alan Wake. I definitely that might. Be, I think. Oh my God! I think. Uh, that might be the first one I did. Red Dead. Red Dead. Um, huh. Let's see. Uh, oh, and it was just you and me that did Red Dead. I forgot. Yeah, it was, that that was Nino Rimo. Oh my god! That was. Yeah. I'm really glad we did that one, though. That's the thing. Like, so. No, Red Dead this, was great. I, I think I'm. I already I think discussed it in the main chat, but um, I I said to uh, Ken. I don't really want to do new games next year. I'm just going to play through old stuff so I can write reviews about it. Okay. Because there's a lot of like independent stuff that gets skipped over. And so you're talking about stuff that probably in the past five to 10 years. I'm going to try. Okay. Yeah. Because if we, if we, like anything that's still on sale, I'll write a review for it. I was about to say, yeah, yeah, not like a PS2 game or something. Yeah, no, unless the PS2 game is being sold. Yeah, I think I think that was literally my first thing. I'm going back and I'm like, yeah, Persona 4, I definitely don't think I was... twenty. Yeah, 2015, I wasn't here on the site. So yeah, that was my first Phoenix Down was Red Dead. God damn, that was a good way to start off. And it's just been downhill from there. That's not true. Um, I've, I've, no, I mean, I've, just the choice of, in the choice of games, not the the talking to you or podcast quality. Although last week is an anomaly. 
Apparently, people had fun with it. So I'm glad because that pisses me off more than anything. But if everybody had a good laugh at our expense, I'm it's worth it. There you go. But um, yeah, I'll keep you posted because maybe that will end up being something we do. If because you, you're, I guess going back to the credits that we were trying to wrap up before I started talking again. Um, what's your next game? Our next game is going to be um uh the Nightmare Before Christmas and we're I'm sorry, be... I'm... what? No. We, 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 oh, the, oh, the theme. oh, oh, okay. Then three. Man, when you said it, I was like, the, what, the fucking PS2 no. DMC game? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to be doing the theme, Nightmare Before Christmas, like we've done for the past probably three Christmases. Um, In December, we're going to be doing uh, Alone in the Dark, the new Nightmare. Um, okay. You had I'm, me going there for a moment, and I was no. like, uh... No, we're going to be doing Alone in the Dark, the new Nightmare. I know uh, Dustin is going to be playing along with us. He is, because he showed me a screenshot. Apparently, he is also playing the Game Boy Color version of that the game. The Game Boy Color version is way better than it has any right to be. I won't say it's good, but the fact that they pull off what they pull off is impressive. All the battles are random, though. They're like RPG, act, like they're action, but they're RPG. So it's like, it's random, random battles, battles, but you go into an active battle. Like you actually have to shoot enemies. So does it? Does it also take place in a snowy place where you play as a blonde woman? <laughs> no, god damn it! That was D two, by the way. That was D two. Yeah, because you wouldn't make it out a... from. So, no. which version of Alone in the Dark: The New Nightmare are you playing? I'm going to be doing the PlayStation One version. It's on PC. Yeah, it's a dollar fifty five on PC, but. Does it work? Where do you see this? Where do you show me? On Steam. It's it on says, Steam. It says it's playable on Steam Deck. Um, is it controller enabled? It, it, you let me fucking read for five seconds. I was. Um, Steam version does not work. Do not buy the Steam version. Buy the fixed playable version on GOG. So it's on GOG. So let me just take a travel over there and see what what the price is. Um, there's also, the only reason why I ask is because there's a PS2 and a PS1 version. So the PS2 version was only released in Europe. Really? Yes. So I have that on my PlayStation 3. Uh, oh, it was released on Dreamcast as well, which I'm assuming the PlayStation version, it's PS2 version is based off of. Correct. Okay, it is $1.59 on GOG. Okay. Uh, controller support. Can you see any reviews on GOG? Uh, yeah, let me scroll down. Um, because three, three, out this... of, three out of five stars, three out of five stars, four out of five stars, four out of five stars, five out of five stars. Does anybody uh, say my... it's unplayable? Uh, flawed, bought this a long time ago for a fiver, but it isn't worth it. The game is all right graphically, and it's okay in puzzles and monsters, but the most awful thing of uh, enemies respawn, ammo do, does not. Okay, Ooh. great. Something to look forward uh, to then. Uh, almost as good as RE1, but not four out of five stars. Sure, overused genre. I mean, technically, then the one's starting to disappoint me. Two out of five stars, but it is playable. Um, so, what's the Steam version? Is it just not it, so, broken? So, so, so the Steam version. So, this happens with a lot of stuff. Um, you you watch Mandalore Gaming, right? Yeah. Yeah, some of the things he will talk about at the beginning of his videos, do not buy the Steam version. If you go to the Steam page, you'll just find a bunch of people complaining about why doesn't this work? Because there hasn't been any effort. Good old games will include mods built in sometimes. Uh, they also do work to make sure it actually fucking runs. Okay. The publisher just throws it up on, on Steam. But good old games actually takes a look at it. All right. So... I will, um... I just, I mean, listen, the PS1... I will do is it on GOG, then. A, as I say, PS1 will give you a PS1 experience, I'm sure. Right. Sure. But I'm also certain that if you're buying a legitimate copy, it costs more. Yeah. Did you well, buy, a, a, did you buy no. a copy on PlayStation? Yeah, avoid that. No, I, 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 I wouldn't, I, I couldn't. The yeah, PlayStation think... would not take my money. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get it on GOG, then. And it's a dollar thirty nine if you'd like to join us. So there you go. But yeah, that's going to be our next game. Um, I wasn't sure if you. I said it was uh, on the last podcast. Uh, last uh, N4G. I said it was probably Yakuza. 
So I apologize. Although I will say this, Nightmare Before Christmas, Drew, why don't you play Yakuza Dead Souls? Because uh-huh. I don't want to play that garbage. I've played that garbage before. <laughs> and I don't yeah, so play that's, it again. What, that's what Ken said too. No, why would they do that? I'm like, I don't know. Complete mm-hmm. completion. That's horrible. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, and then see, so the thing is, we're not getting back to Yakuza until later on in the next year because the next thing after that is going to be <laughs> the book club. We're going to be doing Ready Player Two. Yeah. So. I don't know how that'll be. I weirdly enough, as much as I dislike Ready Player One for reasons, I I, I just I feel I feel catered to, and I hate that shit. But anyways, um, there's definitely. He's not the worst writer ever. No, Fifty, 50 Shades of Grey exists, and that literally what? Like, if you're like, I hate to, I can't believe I'm going off another tangent. I apologize, but quickly, um, Ready Player One relies a lot on other people's material, and I have a criticism about that because it doesn't feel like sampling. It feels like just straight up doing the thing. That being said, people have said he's like one of the worst writers ever. No, no, he is not. The person who wrote um, Fifty Shades of Grey is a bad writer, doesn't understand fucking S&M at all. Like, I don't know how many times I've had to hear that argument from people that I know who are, like, into that stuff. They're like, it's bad. I'm like, I I got it. I I got it from the first guy that told me. Um, But it also started as bad fan fiction, no less. Yeah. Like, it was say say what you want about Ernest Cline. His stuff is readable. Fifty Shades of Grey is not. That was just a weird experience that a bunch of people were like, I can't believe Smut is being publicly sold. Like, it's been publicly sold for years. This, for some reason, is just getting a pass. Yeah. I don't get it. Anyways, that was my minor complaint. I'm over in it. There you go. Well, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing next. I don't, we may not have an episode next week. Um, we may just take the week off. I got to work on some review games anyway. Okay. Gotta write that. I gotta write that Pokemon review eventually. <laughs> uh huh. Oh boy. Um. But um. But is yeah. It, is it worse than my Somerville review? No, it's not gonna uh, be that bad. I mean, it, it, like, Game Freak really needs to hire some better developers. Game Freak has never been a good set of developers. I hate to break that down to people. Yeah, I mean they're good at two D games. <laughs> Are they though? Are they though? I don't think so. Because no. like the, the the whole reason why their first game runs is because creatures stepped in to help fix it. Like mm. and and if you really look back at the old Pokemon games, are they kind of like roll back to Anodyne, like those glitches were definitely not intentional and they definitely didn't know about them until they went at public. Like the yeah. missing missing, missing no, no. like yeah. that is that is bad. That is game breaking. Like literally cannot play this game anymore, potentially breaking. Yeah, that's true. So that's why speedrunners can beat that game in like thirty nine seconds. <laughs> and I love watching it. A goldfish yep. beat Pokemon. That's right. So yeah. Um yeah, I'm gonna be probably working on those. Um so we may not have an episode next week, but in the first the first episode for the uh for December we'll definitely be uh we'll definitely be back. Uh me and Matt we're gonna be doing uh the new nightmare. Um but yeah, that's going to be it for us. Um, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I am Dio Malfury. The podcast itself is at ZTGD Phoenix Down. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for us. You want to plug that email address one more time if the people yeah. have gotten in the fucking 40 minute rant that I went on? I apologize. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's uh, Drew at ZTGD.com. But yeah, like I said, reach out to us. Let us know. Even if it's just to say, hey, I'm listening. And if Keep you up. have recommendations, I'm sure Drew has a list, but you know, sometimes you'll come across something that like more people will want to play and Drew hasn't thought of. So, Yeah, because we're almost done with our, our Yakuza extravaganza. And, and as much as I'm trying to get them to play Fist of the North Star, which is truly the best Yakuza game. Fist of the North Star is really good. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is fantastic. It really is. You reviewed that, right? I did review that. Yeah, it was really it. good. It was really good. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know what our theme is next year. I know Matt said he had some ideas and he has not. Return of the bad game. uh, No, I 
I would totally do that, but I forgot I had JRPGs again. The, see, that's get, the thing. Get a whole we, do, four games we do four games in a year. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I, I say, just bite the bullet and do your Xeno Saga. So Jay will be quiet. What, what else is he going to get you to do after that? Xeno Blade. Those are too recent. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But, uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for us. Um, thank you all for listening. Uh, and uh, until next time, I am Drew. I am Anthony. And we are out of here. You guys have a great week, and we'll be back probably in two weeks with the beginning of Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. Thank you.